So we have uh, another question here for Kimber. Um, are there any penalties? Oh, we, I think we've already answered this. And are there any penalties if a non-attainment area fails to meet the NACs? I think we've already we've got that one. Okay. Um, This is for you, Susan. Um, could you talk about the permanent damage to lungs and how to modify behavior using the AQI to avoid that damage? Well, the concern is <clears throat> that with repeated exposures to high ozone levels and repeated episodes of inflammation, there could be permanent structural changes to the lungs that may uh, result in reduced quality of life later on. Now. Um, Obviously, the air quality index is about acute exposures. It's about exposures that happen on a daily basis. But obviously, minimizing your uh, exposure to high levels on a daily basis is going to also reduce your exposures over time. So I think that the best, uh, best possible answer to that is we don't know exactly how, how what type of long-term exposure it takes to cause permanent lung damage. If, it, if we did, we would probably set a long-term standard. So we don't know exactly what that is, but using the air quality index to minimize your exposures to high daily values will certainly reduce your exposure over the long term. Okay, great. And this is another question for you. Um, this <coughs> comes from Tennessee. Were ozone standards tightened because air is cleaner or strictly because of negative health effects? I think that the question is really, um, do we, did we have more health science that the air quality standard was inadequate to protect public yes. health? Yes, as, as, as Lydia said, there were more than 1,700 new studies. These studies came for, were different types of studies, including animal toxicology studies, human clinical studies, epidemiological studies. And what they told us is that ozone is more damaging than we thought in 1997, and that the effects, are, these harmful effects, occur at lower levels. So it, it really was all about the health information. Great, thank you. That, that clarifies things. Um, does, um, and th this I think we've touched on a little bit, but um, does ozone exposure increase the risk of premature death from heart disease? Is that a finer point on that? Yeah, uh, EBI studies that have looked at specific cause of death have found associations between ozone exposure and death for cardiorespiratory causes. So, while we don't know as much about that as we would like to, there is indication that ozone is associated with uh, premature death in people with both lung and heart disease. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very helpful. And Kimber, this question is for you. It comes from Texas. Are there or will there be forums on the eight-hour ozone standard implementation rule and the process that and the process? that persons or groups who are interested in participating in the process can join even if they're not members of some national organization like NACA. Can you tell us what NACA is and, and then answer that question? Sure. Um, NACA is a National Association for Clean Air Agencies, I believe, and it covers state and, and local agencies. Um, we, we do work directly with them and also work with state and locals through our regional offices. Um, our, our hope, we, we would like to have some additional forum um, open to suggestions if the satellite broadcast is a way to do it then maybe we can have an ozone implementation only type of satellite session and do Q's and A's. Um, a public meeting is another uh, idea that we've talked about doing. Um, we've held, we held state and local um, agency workshops when the PM implementation rule was finalized. Um, Maybe we could do something similar on ozone. I think that we found that workshop to be very helpful and very informative, interactive session. I personally like those face-to-face -face type things. So um, whatever, it, we'd like to hear from you on what works best, best to communicate with you. We try to, to do a number of different ways to capture the, the largest audience. Um, but we will we'll, we'll try to do that. And if the person that sent that question in could let us know what works best for you, that would be great. And we will pass along this email address right to Kimber right now. Okay, yeah. great. So um, before we go, we'd like to um, once again put up the slide that describes where you can put, where you can download the slides from today's presentation. 
Um, uh, we saw a number of slides and presentations today from Lydia Wegman, Lou Weinstock, and Kimber here, who's been with us this afternoon. If you'd like to download those slide presentations, please go to the web at www.epa.gov slash APTI. And that APTI stands for Air Pollution Training Institute. So again, that's www.epa.gov slash APTI. And I'd like to thank our, our panelists today, Kimber Scavo. Again, she works for the EPA Office of Air Quality Planning and Standards in, as a group leader for the state and local air program group. Have I got yes, that right? Yes. Okay, great. And also joined by Susan Stone, who's an environmental scientist and a senior policy advisor for the Health and Environmental Impacts Division in EPA's Office of Air Quality Planning and Standards. That's right. And if you're interested in contacting either Kimber, or Sc Kimber Scavo or Susan Stone or any of the people that you heard uh, mentioned today in uh, the presentations or um, as contact people for additional information, you can go to the web. The EPA website uh, is, often has the contact information and phone numbers. Um, or for further inquiries, you can go to Ask Apti, so that's A S K A P T I at epa.gov. And I would like to um, once again thank our panelists and thank our presenters from the earlier part of the show. And um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, if we did not get to your questions, we apologize and we would be happy, we will plan to get back to you. Um, the slides on today's broadcast are available at the website that you, we just showed, epa.gov slash apti. And if you have other colleagues who were unable to re review the broadcast, please have, please have them view it at the apti webs. I'm sorry, you will be, this broadcast will be available on the web at the epa.gov slash apti website. Thank you again for joining us. I'm Jenny Noonan signing off.